stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are continuing our campaign with Safina Rousseau, the uh, painter, the uh, rogue investigator from the Path to Carcosa expansion. Uh, we uh, had her, uh, you've probably watched her game already, where she took on uh, Curtain Call, and we managed to put up a big W in that one. We weren't able to take out the uh, emissary, but we did gain ourselves uh, three victory points because we did manage to kill the uh, Agent of the King. Here is the deck we're using. Uh, I We gained three experience points, but I haven't made any changes to the deck as of yet. I uh, decided to keep it uh, pretty much the same uh, going into the Last King, and uh, we will see how, you, how we do. The Last King, I find just about anything can happen. Sometimes you can get lucky and get to interview a bunch of the uh, the guests at the party and sometimes the uh, encounter deck will just spoil your fun and you'll be lucky to escape with your life so we will sh see how we do. Here is our look at the campaign so far. In uh, After Curtain Call I decided that uh, Safina would try to warn the police because uh, you know she's a painter. She's not uh, gonna walk back into that uh, theater and, and see what else is going on in there. So she uh, decided to warn the police, so she gained one conviction from that. We did steal from the box office, as you may remember, so the police are suspicious of us. And of course the stranger is on to me, so we've added the uh, man in the pallid mask to our deck, and uh, we are chasing the stranger, so we have, have uh, two tally marks so far on our total for uh, defeating him. So, we are entering the uh, the Last King. We did add uh, two tablets to our uh, Chaos Bag during uh, Curtain Call. So, we uh, that is what uh, we've got going into uh, this game. Now, I have uh, we are set up here with uh, the Last King. I uh, put out all of our uh, all of the dinner guests here we've got uh, at the dining room we've got Constance Dumain the sociable hostess in the ballroom we've got uh, Jordan Perry the dignified fin financier Sebastian Moreau the impassioned producer is hanging out in the courtyard Ishimaru Haruko the costume designer is at the living room and Ashley Clark the talented entertainer is in the gallery and of course Safina begins the game in the foyer to Shroud location with one clue, and it has the action resign. Having found valuable information about the production, you depart and plan your next move. So, uh, our goal is to interview as many of these guests as possible, and then uh, escape with our lives. Now, if you uh, stick around to the end of the campaign, or to the end of the episode, or just check back at the end if you... Uh, if you are unable to watch the whole thing. I am going to let uh, the community choose. If I can successfully navigate Safina through this and she resigns, I'm going to let the community choose what she does. And there are three options. You're probably all familiar with them by now. But I will give you guys the choice and you can uh, vote in the comments. Let me know what you think Safina would do in uh, this circumstance and uh, I'll play the rest of the campaign based on that choice. So. Uh, if you're interested, you can either uh, just watch the playthrough or otherwise just skip to the end and uh, see what happens. We've got uh, Agenda 1A fashionably late. It is a uh, got an, a, a doom threshold of 3. And our act is 1A, discovering the truth, and it has the forced effect when an investigator is eliminated by defeat or resignation. You place each of that investigator's clues on this act instead of placing them on his or her location. This is the way that you gain, uh, gain experience in this scenario. And uh, the objective is to find as many clues as you can, then get out of this awful place. We are playing the Last King on standard difficulty. The skulls are reveal another token, and if you fail, place one doom on a lunatic enemy in play. There are no cultists. There are tablets, and they are a big minus four. That's a, a, a huge penalty, and if you fail, you take a horror. And the other thing is a minus X, but we don't have any of those either. Just the tablets, and those are probably the most painful ones. So uh, 
hopefully we won't be drawing too many of those uh, in this scenario. We're set up and uh, we just need to shuffle up our deck. As you may remember, we did draw the Mob Enforcer for our weakness and we also have the Man in the Pallid Mask. So we will draw our hand now. We get our 13 cards and we'll place five uh, events. So we don't see a single one of our weaknesses, which is kind of nice. We do see Leo, which is awesome. We do see our emergency cash, which we will place. Uh, we've got an elusive. We've got a draw into the flame. We've got an uncage the soul. And we've got a ward of protection. Now the question is, do we want the other emergency cash beneath us? We do have a painted world, so we can gain quite a few resources uh, if we use it, which would enable us to uh, to go to Jordan Perry. As some of you may know, it's uh, it's really unfortunate the positioning of the guests here, because Ishimaru is uh, she's at the one that benefits you. the The living room you get uh, to draw a card. You have the response so you can draw a card if uh, you successfully parlay. And Jordan is at the wrong spot because at the ballroom, if you successfully parlay, you get more resources. So unfortunately, we're going to have to gain resources the old-fashioned way before we're able to even attempt to uh, talk to old Jordan here. So we are going to... I think we're going to keep our hand as we'll, we'll keep... We're going to keep one emergency cash and... Yeah, okay, we're good. So we'll keep one. And uh, actually, maybe not. Because we do have the shriveling. I think I'm actually going to play both of my emergency cash under me. And then I can use the uh, Uncage the Soul to play my Shriveling for free, which is awfully nice to do. So I think we'll stick with that. We've got both, uh, we've got both Unexpected Courage and a Guts, so that's pretty good. Uh, Leo, of course, amazing. I mean, he was the the reason we were able to win that last game. So let us uh, let's embark on this. Of course, our first action will be to gain a resource, which we will then immediately spend to bring Leo out. So we have two actions remaining. And I think our next action, we're going to play a spell or ritual from our hand for th for free, being the, uh, the Shriveling. So we'll gain four charges there. And... So we need six cards in order to go to Ishimaru. Maybe we don't want to do that yet. Hmm. What's her test two? No, we're not going to play our shriveling yet. I'm going to take that back. Um, I'm going to try to get a better start here. So we're going to go... Um, we had two actions left, so I'm going to move up to the uh, living room. We'll flip that over. That's a three, th three shroud location with zero clues, and it has the response. After you perform a parlay action in the living room, you get to draw a card. So we are going to, uh, we are just going to parlay with her. We're going to go four two because we've got six cards in our hand, at least six cards in our hand. So we will go 4-2 and see how we do. Chaos Bag says that's a skull. So that's reveal another token. So we will go to our token bag here. We will look at the top token. And it is an Elder Sign. Okay, so we can uh, we, we get plus three and we get to draw take one of these cards out from under the uh, out from under us. I'm gonna grab I think I want the Ward of Protection. 
Yes, I want the word of protection. And we gain a clue. Okay. Good start. We've got one clue so far. And uh, we do have the response. After we parlay, we can draw a card. So I'm going to do that as well. See if we can't get. Uh, oh, we get another word of uh, another uncage the soul. Okay, so that's not going to help us as much, but that's okay. That will be the end of our first turn. We are going to draw a card. There is a manual dexterity, and we're going to gain a resource. But first, we have to discard two cards. Um, I'm going to discard and uncage the soul and who else has because if we go for him next we can either go <clears throat> Ashley or we could go for Sebastian because we've also got to worry about Vic uh, Diane here coming out and blocking us. So we want to be in a position where we can uh, deal with that. He's a test three. I think I'm going to pitch the manual dexterity. Okay, so then we gain a resource. We add a Doom, and we draw an Encounter card, which is going to be the Roaches. I hate the Roaches so much. Roaches are, uh, they've got X Fight, 2 Health, and 3 Evade, and they've, X is equal to the Shroud value of the Roach Swarm location, which in this case is 3, and they will do 1 damage to you. So we need to... We've got our four actions. I think our first action, we are going to take an attack of opportunity, put the damage on Leo. We're going to use our Uncage the Soul to play our Shriveling. Yeah, so we still have six, six cards in our hand. So we took the attack, that was our first action. Second action, we can try to kill this Roach Swarm. It's going to be a 4 versus a 3. Not great odds, but we're going to give it a try. 4 versus 3, see how we do. Minus 1, that's a hit. So the Roach Swarm dies. We can, uh, we've got two actions remaining. We can do Ishimaru's par, uh, Parlay, so four versus two, because we've got six cards. That's a zero, so we do Parlay successfully with her, and we do get to flip her over. There's a lot of game text. I'm not going to read it uh, in this uh, playthrough, but we will just remember that we uh, interviewed Haruko, and uh, we flip her back over. And now we can continue. Now the question is, we're not going to have the resources. Who's our best bet? I mean, test three against Constance, that's going to be tough for, uh, that's going to be quite difficult for uh, Safina to pull off. Sebastian is a much easier play, as is Ashley. Jordan's going to be tough until we get some resources out here. So let's uh, we've got one action remaining. Let's move to the courtyard. That's where we're going to go. We're going to try to set this up so we can get some quick so we flip over the courtyard. Of course, it's a uh, five-shard location with zero clues enforced. After you enter the courtyard, you have to discard the top card of the encounter deck and draw that. And if it's an enemy, you have to draw it. So we will do that now. Please, no enemy, no enemy. Okay. Whew. Awesome. Okay, that is our turn. 
no enemies to worry about. We simply draw a card. There is a think on our feet. Now that is pretty awesome to get. And we will gain a resource. Add a doom. And draw an encounter card. What do we get? It is the ooze. Ooze and filth. The hazard you put it into play next to the agenda deck and locations get plus one shroud. No problem. That's fine with that's fine by me. Alright, so we've got uh Sebastian Moreau, he's a parlay test three. So we have our four actions. We need to make two parlay tests against him to be successful. We're going to pitch a guts. We're going to go six versus three for the first one. See how we do. Elder sign again. Nice. So that's a plus three. So we do succeed. So we will gain that. And we get to draw one. Uh, we can play... I think I want the elusive. Or do I say... No, I'm going to pull a, an emergency cash. And we get to draw a card for the guts. Which is another guts. Okay, that's nice. Uh, we will do it again. We're going to pitch at the guts to go six versus three. Ah, there's a minus four, unfortunately. Okay, so that's just a straight up failure. We've got two actions remaining. Uh, we can go four versus three straight up, or we can pitch. I guess we could go for Constance or Jordan. I really want to get uh, him done this turn. I'm going to pitch an unexpected courage. We're going to go six versus three again. Oh, come on, chaos bag. Another minus four. Okay, we'll do it one more time. I really want her. There's a tablet. That is a minus four, and I take a horror. Oh my god. That was three minus fours in a row. That was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Okay. Well, that didn't quite go the way we thought, unfortunately. Uh, however, nothing we can do about it. We are going to draw a card. There's the man in the pallet mask, so he is going to go farthest away. There's no real farthest away for him, so he can go... Um, he can go up here. And I will draw, I will gain a resource. The ooze and filth goes away. We add a doom. We flip this over. And this is the final guess to find the bystander asset with the fewest clues on it. We spawn the set aside Diane Divine enemy at that asset's location. So Diane Divine shows up here. And uh, while Diane Divine is at our location, we cannot discover or take control of clues. And at the beginning of the enemy phase, she will find the bystander asset with the fewest clues and uh, move there. So we do have an option. We can try to kill Diane, or we can simply move up to Ashley and take the double action to parley with her, which will bring her down, which will bring uh, Diane there, and then we can go back to Sebastian the next turn and try to deal with him there. So that is, uh, we've got a choice here. It's going to take us two actions to kill, kill Diane. If we kill Diane, we succeed with Sebastian and move, 
Then we could do Ashley Clark in one turn, which would be awesome for us. So we will see if we can't do that. Let's see what the encounter deck gives us first of all. We draw we draw the young psychopath. After the young psychopath engages you, you must either take one horror or she gets plus three fight until the end of the phase. We will take the horror. Leo will take the horror for us. And so she's a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Diane is not going to help us there. We, I don't think we can take her this turn. Uh, we can kill, move, and then we can still do Ashley. So we will do that. Oh, I can actually play that. Oh, wait a sec. No, 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 no. Let's go back here. So the young psychopath shows up. I am not going to take the horror. Because what I can do... is play my think on your feet for one so I can move to an, a connecting location so I can move up here so this works very well for us because now um, oh no I screwed up I did screw up that too. I don't need to put her here. She can go here. Okay, let me think about this for a second. So she could have gone with Haruko because she's got the least clues. No, I'm still, I'm going to leave it like this. This is fine. I'm going to leave it like that. I'll play my think on our feet to go up here. I will, um, what am I doing here? I've got, it spawns, I run, she stays there. Okay, so what we can do now, we have Leo, so we can take two actions to parlay with her twice, so we gain two clues. And we have to flip this over. I should remember that. We are at the gallery. It has a, it's a one trial location with zero clues and has a forced effect. After you end your turn at the gallery, you have to test willpower two. And if you fail, you place one of your clues on the gallery. So I am, uh, that worked out really well because uh, we clear Ashley in one turn because we've got Leo with us. And at the end of my turn, I have to test four versus two. So we're just going to test straight up. That's a skull. That's going to be a look at another token. So we will look at the top token. And it is a minus two, so we are fine. Okay, so we've got two. And of course, we will flip Ashley over. And uh, she sings us a beautiful song. And we remember that we've, re we've interviewed Ashley. Now... We go to the enemy phase. We need to move Diane. Diane moves to the asset with the fewest clues. So Diane shows up in the gallery, which is fine. That is fine by me. And we will go we will draw a card. There's our Holy Rosary. Gain a resource, add a doom, and draw an encounter card, which is the ooze again. Put ooze and filth into play next to the agenda deck. Every location gets plus one shroud. No big deal there. Now we can move back. To the courtyard. We're going to have to draw another card. 
discard the top card of the deck. It is not an enemy. The young psychopath engages us, so we've either got to take a horror or she gets plus three fight. Leo will take a horror. We have three actions remaining. We will shoot the young psychopath in the face with shriveling. So we are going four versus two. Actually, I'm doing this in the wrong order. I uh, What I'm going to do first... Uh, I'm going to take a step back here because I'm screwing up. Uh, I'm going to actually play my Holy Rosary first. And I'm going to put the Horror on it. Then move. So I have two actions left. Now I'm going to shoot the young psychopath because now I'm do you going five versus two instead of four versus two and uh, that paid off because I needed that to, because I drew a minus three so the young psychopath dies and I have one action remaining and now we can test five versus three for Sebastian Moreau and let's see if we can't nail that. That is an auto fail. Okay. No luck there. Okay. Diane moves. She can go to Haruko. So now we're in a really good position because Diane can just bounce back and forth between those two. We don't have to worry about her anymore. We draw a card. There's a right of seeking. That's not going to help us much this game. We're going to gain a resource. That is going to go away. We're going to add a doom and we're going to draw an encounter card. Which is the roaches. The roaches are back. The roaches are back. And it's my. There you are. <laughs> five strength roaches this time. Or five fight roaches this time rather than uh, two fight roaches. So or three fight roaches, what they were the last time. So what we can do... I don't think Jordan's in play this game, unfortunately. Um, we could gain three, potentially. How do, we, how do we do? Can we evade the roaches? We can go four versus three. We do have four actions. So we can go four versus three. See if we can evade the roaches. Okay, let's do it. Four versus three. That's a fail. That's a fail. That's a fail. Uh, I'm going to take a damage anyway. I'm going to try to clear Sebastian. Uh, we're going to pitch that to the test to go 5-6 versus 3. That's a repull. Skull's a repull. So we look at the top one. Come on. Minus one. We got him. Okay. Whew. I was getting worried there for a second. Okay, so that we do take an attack of opportunity because we did that. And then we get attacked again by the roach. But that's fine. We've cleared three of the five. So now we have a choice. Constance is going to be tough because we've only got a two intellect. I don't think we can... We don't have the cards really to deal with her. Um, we are at six clues. So we will gain three experience points. Um, we do have an evade we can play. So, yeah. Okay, well, let's see what we draw. We uh, took an attack. Diane's got to move, but that doesn't really make, uh, do us any, change the game state all that much. We draw a think on our feet. So that's good. Uh, we will gain a resource. Uh, 
add a doom. Now this will uh, pretty much tell us where we go. So now we have to draw one of the sickening reality cards, which I have down here. We will shuffle those up. And it is going to be Sebastian. I am so glad we got that final clue off him before he popped. So Sebastian shows up and he's a big mean guy. He's got uh, three fight, five health, and three evade. He's a hunter, retaliate, monster, lunatic, elite, and his attacks cannot be cancelled. So we have a choice. So all the doom goes away. If all the doom will go away. There we go. Uh, we need to draw an encounter card. That is a uh, ancient evil, so that is going to speed the game up a little bit. Adding a doom there. Now we've got a choice. So we've got three resources, so really Jordan is not in play. Um, Potentially, we could we could evade Sebastian. Or we could just play... Well, if we evade him, that doesn't do us any good because he is coming after us. Or, sorry, if we play elusive, he is coming after us this turn. And we <clears throat> do not want to be taking... Uh, two damage and two horror. Uh, the problem is we've also got the roaches to deal with. Uh, the roaches aren't going to chase us, but Sebastian sure is. So if we evade Sebastian and elusive away from the roaches, uh, we could get to Jordan, but we're not going to be able to do anything with him this turn. We could get six, seven, eight. We need ten, though. Ten is huge. And then we need to pass two intellect, two tests. I'm not liking our odds there. Uh, I think we're just going to have to... Maybe resigning is the better part of Valor here. I can get out because I've got the elusive. Let's give it a try. Let's, let's be bold here. Let's be bold. We'll give it a try. We've got a couple turns. All right, so we will go, let's try to evade Sebastian, first of all. So it's just four versus three. We'll see what we do. We're just going straight up. There's another skull, so that's, we've got to look, take a peek here, see what our top card is. It's a minus one. Okay, so we evade him. Uh, yeah, so he is evaded. That was our first action. Now what we can do, uh, we can play our elusive using the Painted World for two. Oh, that's going to cost us two. Shoot. Um, evade, evade, move. Yeah, no, this isn't going to work out. We're just, we can't, uh, we don't have the shriveling charges either to kill Sebastian, unfortunately. We could kill him if he, uh, if we had one more shriveling charge, we could kill Sebastian, but unfortunately we don't. The best we could do would be if we play our elusive... We could go up to Constance, 
but then we'd be just testing well it's possible it's, it's possible we could do it constants is probably our best bet actually okay so we've done that let's play it let's try it let's give it a try here we'll pay our two resources to play our painted world to play our elusive out from under us to get rid of these stupid roaches this is our that's a fast action too so we keep whoops what am I doing here? There we go. So that's fast. So we end up, we can zip over to the dining room. It's a two shroud location with zero clues and it has the action heal a horror, then reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it's a skull or tentacle, you take a horror and place a doom on the dining room. Okay, so we've got to act fast here. We've got three actions and we have a couple of cards we can pitch. Uh, we're basically just going to be doing even odds, though, because we don't have anything else we can use to boost our our intellect, unfortunately. So first action, we'll go. We'll pitch our right of seeking. We'll go three versus three. Minus one, we fail. Okay. Let's go. Let's pitch. Um, I kind of want to save the think on our feet because that can get us out of here if we need to. Yeah, we're just get, this is just really Hail Mary territory here. We're just trying to get Constance maybe if we can get her. Uh, two versus three. That's a minus four. That's a failure. And we take a horror. And we'll do it again. And we take another horror. Yeah, this isn't working out for us here. Okay, we tried. It was worth the attempt. Uh, so what we are going to do, the roaches are staying put. Everything else, Diane's got to move, but that's really inconsequential at this point. Uh, we go to the upkeep, Sebastian readies. And we go, we draw a card. There's our Shroud of uh, Storm of Spirits which we could use to do two damage to Sebastian if we had the money. But he's coming after us this turn and I don't want to die. So we will gain a resource, add a doom, and draw an encounter card, which is an ancient evils. Hooray. That will advance us this turn. Awesome. Thanks, Encounter Tech. <laughs> Thanks for speeding up the game and making my decisions a lot easier. Okay, so we'll remove all that doom. Let's go get ourselves a second sickening thing. Is it going to be Constance? It is Jordan. Jordan is our man. So Jordan becomes the evil his evil self shows up. We'll remove him. Drop him there. Okay. So we've got two hunters who are coming after us next turn. I believe it is time to leave this game. So I am simply going to take my first action to uh, use uh, Safina's game text to draw one of the cards underneath me the elusive. I am uh, going to play my elusive to move myself to the foyer and I will resign. So I interviewed three out of the five. I think I prob I might have been able to get another one if I hadn't uh, Excuse me, I wasted a lot of time with uh, Sebastian. I think I've missed four or five tests with him, so that really slowed me down. But I did get him in the end. So I've got Sebastian, Ashley, and 
Ishimaru. So that is our. Uh, so yeah, that is the. Uh, that's the last. Uh, the last king. We are going to end the game. We put all of our clues on. Uh, on discovering the truth. So we're going to get three XP. So we've got a total of six XP so far this campaign. That's pretty good. Would have been nice to get to a few more, but that's you know we can only do what we can. We're gonna get we're gonna have two hunters showing up next turn, and that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna work out very well for poor uh, Safina. So we end with three XP, and we get uh, now we have to make a choice, or should I say, you guys get to make a choice because I am not gonna make the choice this time. You guys are out there. This is your time to shine. So we are going to, of course, for those of you who are familiar with The Last King, we get to, uh, we did resign. So uh, our resolution is, uh, we get resolution one, I believe it is. And so we, uh, we add all the, inter the, the campaign log tells us to uh, put all the names of the VIPs we interviewed, VIP slain, we get uh, victory points, uh, one for every two clues, and we go to Lunacy's reward. So our choices here are, or your choice is, you've got a choice of three. Things seem to have calmed down. Perhaps we should go back inside and investigate further. That's choice one. Choice two, I don't trust this place one bit. Let's block the door and get the hell out of here. And choice three is, if these people are allowed to live, these horrors will only repeat themselves. We have to put an end to this. We have to kill them. So this is your choice. If you're watching this episode, vote in the comments down below. Do we go back inside? Do we block the door and get the hell out? Or do we kill them all? Now this is Safina, remember. Now I don't know if Safina's a firebug. I don't know whether she's one to block the door and I don't know whether she's one just to, uh, to go back inside. That's for you to decide. Those are your three choices. Again, go back inside and investigate further. Block the door and get the hell out. Or kill them all and set the place on fire. Those are your three choices. So vote in the comments down below. We'll see uh, how many, uh, which, which, uh, we'll see which uh, option gets the most votes. I don't know when I'm going to be playing the next scenario for this. We'll give it a couple days maybe, give you guys a chance to watch this and uh, weigh in in the comments what you think Safina would do. What is her, uh, what kind of character is she? Is she uh, the type who's going to get the hell out of Dodge? Is she going to go back in? and uh, look around or is she going to uh, bar sorry is she going to go back in and look around bar the door or set the place on fire you guys decide and let me know in the comments down below and uh, i look forward to hearing and maybe give your reason for that as well just not uh, just not your choice give a reason why you think safina would do the thing you are proposing her to do that is, uh, that's The Last King. I, we did okay in this one, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing Echoes of the Past here with her shortly. And for those of you who are waiting for the Lola playthrough, that will be coming very shortly. Uh, I just uh, felt like playing Safina today, so that's who you get. And uh, we'll be continuing with the Lola campaign here right quick. That is going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this playthrough, please uh, leave me a thumbs up. I always appreciate it, and it helps out the channel a great deal. Leave a comment down below. Again, you've got your three. You've got the choice of the three options. Leave your comment down below with the reason you think Safina would do uh, what she would do, and uh, we will go with that option for the rest of the campaign. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I release future content. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromling at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromling. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.